Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very nice exponential equation with complex numbers. So we have e to the power z equals negative 2 and we're going to be solving for z values where z is a complex number. Great. What else can we solve for, right? If you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry, I have another channel called CyberMath that is cyber with an S. And on this channel, which is A plus BI, I go over basics of complex numbers. Go ahead and check out my lecture videos if you're new to complex numbers and let us know if you have any questions. Great, so to solve this equation, we can think about a couple formulas. For example, if you know the polar form of a complex number, which can be written as e to the power i theta, thanks to Euler, this is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. So do you think we can replace z with that and set the right-hand side equal to negative 2? So we have the following problem if we do that. So we do have a complex number on the left, which has an imaginary part. And on the right-hand side, we have a real number, which means the imaginary part is 0. So is it possible to solve this equation? This would probably be another uh, video, but just think about it. Is it possible to get a theta value that satisfies something like this? That's actually going to answer the problem because if we know theta, then we know z because z is equal to i theta in this case. But is z going to be in the form of i theta? And of course, it depends on theta, right? But anyways, we're going to do this a little bit more systematically, a little differently. But I just wanted to throw it out there so you can kind of think about it. So we have e, a power of e on the left-hand side. Think about the modulus of a number like that. Is it going to be a power of e or is it just going to be e, right? You can think about the absolute value of e to the z. Is that going to be the same as the absolute value of e to the power z? And what does that mean if we get a real number from e? Well, we, e was already real. So the absolute value of e is the same thing as e. So it's going to be the same thing as e to the z. But is that going to be a real number? Anyways, a lot of questions. So here's what we're going to do first. For our first method, let's go ahead and replace z with a plus bi. That's probably a better way to do it, right? Because that takes care of both parts. But wait a minute. Isn't, this isn't the name of the channel A plus BI? Yes, it is. That's why I named it that way. So in that sense, it's unique. But if you replace Z with A plus BI, you get E to the power A plus BI equals negative 2. Beautiful, right? And now what's next? Well, since A plus BI is the exponent, we can go ahead and split it up into E to the A times E to the BI equals negative 2. One thing to remember, when you write a complex number in this form, a plus bi, which is the standard form, you got to know one thing, that a and b are real numbers. The second thing you need to know, and that's how we define real, uh, complex numbers basically, that i is the square root of negative 1, before I forget to say that. Uh, that also implies that i squared is equal to negative 1, right? The reason why I say the square root, even though there are two numbers whose square equals negative 1, i and negative i, i is considered the principal square root of negative 1. That's why we write it as the square root of negative 1. And this is not a real valued square root, of course. You can also write it, probably a better way to write it would be negative 1 into the power 1 half. But that kind of includes both of the roots. You, you see what I'm saying? So those notations are kind of different. Anyways, what can we derive from here? Well, first of all, since a is real, e to the power a is also real. So, this is a real number multiplied by some imaginary whatever, and that gives us a real number. How is that possible? Well, depends on what e to the bi is. And by Euler's formula, if you remember, this can be written as cosine of b plus i times sine of b. And of course, without distributing, we wouldn't know what we're talking about, right? So let's go ahead and distribute e to the a cosine b plus i times e to the a sine b is equal to negative 2. Now, we have complex numbers on both sides. And what do you know if two complex numbers are equal, right? The real parts have to be equal, first of all, and then the imaginary parts uh, come into the picture, right? So this is the real part, which should be negative 2. This is the real part, which should be the same. And the imaginary part, if you look at the imaginary parts, then you're going to realize that, uh-oh, we don't have an i on the right-hand side. If we did, it would look like something negative 2 plus i, negative 2 plus 2i, whatever. But we don't have that, so this has to be 0. 
Okay, that gives us a system of equations. So should we write it like this with the sign first because I want to show you something. e to the a sine b and e to the cosine b are given as follows. Okay, now you can look at it uh, from different perspectives. First one, you can basically think of it as, okay, e to the a sine b is zero. Can one of these be zero? Well, here's the thing. e to the a can never be zero. Why? Because a has to be negative infinity, and that's not a number, right? That's just a concept, or you can take limits, but we're not talking about limits here. So this means that sine b has to be zero, right? That's the only option, because b is real. We know that. I mean, even, even if b wasn't real, I don't think it would change anything. But anyways, if sine b is equal to zero, then we kind of know that b is pi over 2, it could also be 3 pi over 2, or we could say, uh, you know what, you can just add multiples of pi to it, right? If you think about the unit circle, this is where sine is 0. Is that right? Wait a minute, that's not, that's wrong. Sine is 0 at 0 and pi. Okay, never mind. I meant multiples of pi, no, not pi plus pi over 2. So, yes, b needs to be a multiple of pi. Could be odd or even, right? But let's look at the second equation. What does that tell us? If b is equal to pi then cosine of b is going to be negative 1, right? And from here, we get e to the power a times negative 1 equals negative 2. And this makes a lot of sense because this means e to the power a is equal to 2, which is acceptable. Remember, a is real, so e to the a is also real. And from here, we can safely say that a is equal to ln 2. If you natural log both sides, that's what you're supposed to get. Great, so we found the value of a and b. So can we just find the number from there? Absolutely. Look, we said that z is equal to a plus b i. So from these two things, we get z equals a plus b i. And I know some people are going to write it as i b. They say i is operator or whatever. No, it's just a multiplier. It's a coefficient. The coefficient of b is i or the coefficient of i is b. You know, they're just multiplied. Don't, it's not that deep, okay? So, but anyways, that's one of the solutions. And what about the other possibility? If b is equal to n pi and n is 0 or 2 or 4, like even numbers, then b can be 2 pi. And in that case, cosine b would be positive 1, right? And then e to the power a times 1 is equals negative 2 would give you e to the power a equals negative 2. But then from here, a would be ln of negative 2. Uh-oh, this is a real valued ln, so this is not acceptable, which means b cannot be 2 pi, it has to be an odd multiple of pi. Why? Because both equations have to be satisfied. So this seems to be the only solution, don't you think? Well, obviously, you can add multiples of 2 pi to pi, pi plus 2 pi, pi plus 4 pi, whatever, but just like as the principal solution maybe, or the principal value of z can be something like this, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the second approach, because I think the second approach is also pretty good. For the second approach, we're going to adjust natural log both sides, which kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Or you can do this. There are two ways to do it. You can just natural log both sides, but then you're going to have to think about what's the natural log of negative 2. So let's go ahead and do this to make life easier for ourselves. Let's go ahead and write this number in polar form, thanks to Euler again, because Euler is the greatest mathematician of all times, in my opinion at least. So we can go ahead and do this. Like, how do you represent negative 2 on the complex argon plane? Well, it's a real number, so it's going to be on the real axis, two units away from zero to the left, so that its modulus is going to be two units, right? And then, of course, it makes an angle of pi radians, that's where the pi comes from, with the positive real axis. So we can write any complex number as r times e to the i theta, where r is the modulus, which is true in this case. So negative 2 can be written as 2 times e to the power i pi. Beautiful. And when you set it equal to e to the z, and then natural log both sides, uh-oh, we can get the answer right away, can't we? So z is going to drop, and ln e is 1, so z is going to be ln 2 plus ln e to the i pi, which is i pi. Did we get the same thing? Yay, great. So success, right? Well, what about considering all the possible angles? Yes, you can replace pi with pi plus 2 pi n, where... Uh, n is an integer, so that you can cover all the solutions in this case, okay? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and...
Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI and bye bye.